Hey everybody, welcome back to the vlog. Thank you so much for joining me once again for Tea Time. Today we have once again some fireside. I'm really getting into this lately. I just love that smokiness of this. This is really good. This is part of my Dark Moon Tea Collection. If you haven't tried any, go check them out. So, smoky, smoky. Anyways. So today we're gonna to talk once again about copyright and a professional photographer that shared her work on Instagram ended up losing a lawsuit that she levied against Mashable who used her work. And I wanna get into it a little bit deeper and hopefully give you some information that can help you decide how to move forward with sharing your images on social media. All right, hopefully this helps. But before I get into it, I wanna say, if you are a DSLR shooter still, a lot of you have moved over to mirrorless, I know, but if you are a DSLR shooter, I'm sure a lot of you have found that your autofocus is not exactly the way it should be. And when you take photographs and you point, let's say at your model's eyes, and her eyelashes are blurry, but the back of her ear is in focus, or her eyelashes are blurry and the tip of her nose is in focus, that's basically front focusing or back focusing. Your lens needs to be calibrated to your body. Well, luckily, almost all major manufacturer cameras today, DSLRs, allow you to do autofocus lens calibration, all right? About eight or nine years ago, I invented this product. It's called the Focus Pyramid. It's an autofocus lens calibration tool. This is being used worldwide in schools by photographers, videographers all over the place, all right? I wanted to tell you about this real quick because a lot of you have come to me and said, you know, I have a two, three thousand dollar lens, but my point and shoot takes better images, quote unquote, just sharper images. Why is that? Well, that is the reason. If you don't calibrate your lens to your body, the calibration is off, your autofocus is off, and even though you point at your model or whatever it is, and you hear that beep beep and that lock up little square on that specific spot, later on in post-production, when you go and look at it, you're like, what the hell happened? I know I got it right, but when I look at it, the autofocus is off. Well, that is simply, like I said, front focus, back focusing, and it's easy to fix, guys. It is easy to fix. And since we're all on this lockdown mode where we're a shelter at home, quarantine, whatever you want to call it, it's a good time to get all of your kit in line, all right? And this is one of those products that allow you to do it. So in most DSLRs today, they allow you to do autofocus lens calibration on the short side as well as the long side. So you can calibrate at 24 millimeters and you can calibrate at 70 millimeters. So no matter where it is, you will always be dead on. Your focus will be perfect. And the beauty is it retains that information. So if you calibrate your, let's say 5D Mark IV to a 70 to 200, a 24 to 70, a little quick 50 or whatever, every single one of those lines is immediately when you put it on the camera, the camera says, hey, that's that 24 to 70. Let's use these settings. And that's what it does. So if you haven't, picked up one of those focus pyramids in the past, go check it out. You can go over to jchristina.com, use coupon code YT20 at checkout and you'll get 20% off. You can also pick it up on Amazon, no matter where you are in the world. And of course, B&H Photo and Video. Love those guys over there. So you can check it out over there also. Anyways, the end of that shameless plug. Hopefully you guys can use one of these things and dial in that autofocus. Let me start out by saying this article that I read came out of SLR Lounge and it is from a fellow contributor over there and his name is David Cruz. Crew. Really nice guy. Awesome, awesome. He does really good articles. Great work. So kudos over there to David. Now, this article was about a photographer, a professional photographer. Her name is Stephanie Sinclair, and she sued Mashable for copyright infringement. Now, the backstory, or I guess in a nutshell, if you want to go read the article, you can, but in a nutshell, basically, Mashable approached her and said, we wanna use your image in one of our up and coming articles. And we're gonna give you $50 to use that image. And she said, no, that's all right. I don't need the $50, I'd rather you not use it. And that's where she left it. Well, weeks later, 
she finds an article comes out on Mashable, and guess what? Lo and behold, it has her image in it. She's like, I just said, no, you can't use it. I don't want your $50. What is that? So she sues. And long story short, she loses. Now, you and I are probably thinking, well, how is that, that how can she lose? They asked, it's in writing. She said, no, they used it. She sued and she loses. Well, basically she lost on a technicality. And this is a lot of times what ends up happening. And a lot of you don't know the ins and outs when it comes to social media and what we are actually allowing these entities to do with our work, with our video, with our photos, with our writing, with anything, with everything, right? Well, what happened was on Instagram and Facebook and Twitter and Flickr and all the rest of them, you have to agree to their TOS, their terms of service to use their service. And that was part one of the issue because by using it, she agreed to this lengthy 86 page Bible where you say, yes, I agree to everything. How many of you have read those? Yeah, probably like me, none. <laughs> I just don't, I just simply don't. You wanna use a social media platform, you're gonna to have to agree to their TOS. What that TOS is, you don't know. Now, also, what happens is, is with these platforms, they label your account as public, right out the gate. Now, as a public account, that TOS becomes very powerful. Now, if you have it labeled as a private account after the fact, you call it a private account, now everything becomes more private. And whatever is in there is yours and they really can't touch it, so to speak. But who in the heck wants to have a private Instagram account or any social media account? It would be stupid. The whole reason for social is to be social and to put your work out there and hopefully to get more work from it. You, can't, you know, it doesn't make sense. A private Instagram account. Who are you going to share it with? Your family, I guess? That's about it. I don't know. It doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Also, the TOS itself has in there explicit information that says that your work is basically their work to allow embedding. So you're providing the rights, for example, to Instagram to allow any of their third parties or anyone to embed those images or those videos or whatever. And that is the basis of this technicality. Now Mashable did win because of this embedding issue. What they simply did was they did not download the photo onto their server and served it up through their server. They just simply embedded it right from Instagram. That is it. Now, let me just read to you what the judge said and maybe we can get a, a better understanding here. The judge says, Sinclair argues that it is unfair for Instagram to force a professional photographer like her to choose between remaining in private mode on one of the most popular public photo sharing platforms in the world and granting Instagram a right to sub-license her photographs to users like Mashable. He continues, unquestionably, Instagram's dominance of photo and video sharing social media, coupled with the expansive transfer of rights that Instagram demands from its users, means that the plaintiff's dilemma is a real one. But by posting the photograph to her public Instagram account, the plaintiff made her choice. This court cannot release her from the agreement she made. So, you lose on a technicality. The court's saying, yeah, the issue is real, but I can't do anything about it because you signed off on it and you gave away your soul to Instagram. I can't help you, right? Now the plaintiff's attorney said, we believe no photographer knowingly contracted away their ownership rights in their photos when choosing to use Instagram. We remind everyone that this is only one single federal district court's opinion and is not the binding law of the United States or even the Second Circuit Court of Appeals. Our client is considering an appeal. Best of luck to you with that. Once again, it's a signed agreement. 
that terms of service, that TOS that you sign is binding, all right? And chances are, even if she brings us up to the second district court of appeals, she's probably gonna lose. Sadly, guys, sadly, she's probably going to lose. The bottom line here is, once you upload your photos or video or work to any of these social media sites, they're ripe for the picking, all right? You've given away so much of your rights to them already. And here's a perfect example of a technicality using the embedding clause or rule in the TOS that allows them to embed or anyone to embed these photos into their articles. Crazy, right guys? Crazy. So what the heck do we do, right? What do we do? Now, I've talked about this for years and years and years and years. And to me, the bottom line here is you want to watermark your photos. Now, yes, sometimes it's ugly. Try to make it pretty, all right? But watermark your photos that you want to put online, all right? If you want to have a personal portfolio that you could send clients to to go look at all of your work without watermark, so be it. But today, Instagram is basically our business card or our means of putting ourselves out there. It is our portfolio, right? If you are a baby photographer, you're gonna have a whole ton of baby shots on your Instagram in hopes to get more photo work having to do with capturing babies, right? Very simple. And it works, guys. It definitely works. So by having all of your work on a website that sees 17 people per month, or having it on Instagram that sees 17,000 people a month, which is better? Bottom line, once again, is watermark. Try to make it pretty and watermark, because even if they used her photo, even though she said no, and said keep your $50, they used her photo. If she had a nice sized watermark on the image, she would then get more exposure than she would get probably on her Instagram account. Because Mashable is a big news provider, right? So the bottom line here is watermark your work going forward. That is about the best thing that you can do because even if someone uses it, at least you will get exposure for them using it. Now, if they use it and crop out your watermark, you have something there. Think about it. They're allowed to embed your photo, but not manipulate it. So if they were to embed her photo and it had a watermark on it and they cropped it and took the watermark off, she would have won that case, guaranteed. So guys, I hope as always, you've gotten some value out of this video. If you have, please throw me a big thumbs up. That is very helpful. And don't forget to smash that subscribe button so you can get all my content when it becomes available and click the bell icon up there. So when it is available, you will be notified of it. And finally, head over to my website, jchristina.com where you can find all the photography tools that I've invented for you and me over the years. And hopefully there's something there that you might like. And if there is, please pick it up and support me like the Focus Pyramid. Get one. If you have a DSLR, get one. I promise you, it will help out. You take a lens that you paid two or $3,000 that is making blurry images, this will fix it, okay? Get your value out of your lenses. Do your autofocus lens calibration. Anyways, guys, don't forget to download my ebook over at jcristina.com forward slash ebook. Once again, jcristina.com forward slash ebook. It is an ebook on how to make sharper images, 10 tips. Really good tips, great for amateurs as well as professionals. Download it. Also, head over to community.jcristina.com. Community.jcristina.com. Basically, it is our creative community that I hang out in there and we can talk. All right? Chill out. There's hundreds of you there. A lot of smart people. Go over there. Let's have a little conversation away from YouTube. <laughs> Anyways, guys, put your comments about this in the comment area below. Let's have a discussion. And once again, thank you so much for being here. Many blessings to each and every one of you and your family. Stay safe and stay healthy.
Take care, guys. <laughs>